Capture the flag, hacking competitions are really useless to get the skills needed for a job in IT security. Look for example at this challenge. You get this barcode image that is not a normal barcode and you have to read it. What's the solution? We have here a write up by Roman H where he first extracted the color values for each channel, red, green and blue, and then interpreted each color value as ASCII. And then it turns out the blue color values encoded the flag. Great. What did we learn now? Let's explore why CTFs are terrible. Let's check out another challenge. On a CTF dashboard you would see this here. Your first challenge is in the image below. Now when you read the write up by George you can see that he first downloaded the image and gets stuck. And then later he noticed that on the website itself there was a single character with a link overlaid on top of the image and clicking on that led to another website, which contained a file to download which was a PCAP network packet capture. He opened it up in Wireshark and in some TCP packets you could find the transmission of a zip file, which you had to extract, open and then you got the flag. Another example, a file that contains a long string da da di di da. Amazing. Turns out it's Morse code and when decoding it you get a long character string which starts with 0x indicating it's a hex string. So you decode the hex values and inside a lot of garbage you find the flag. What's the purpose of this? This has nothing to do with the real world or with IT security. This is just pure guessing. A puzzle, like a crossword in a newspaper. It basically comes down to being able to think like the author and not having any hacking skills. So many challenges are just this kind of bullshit obfuscation. This goes even so far that the GCHQ, the UK intelligence organization, has released one of the most used CTF tools called CyberChef. The Cyber Swiss Army Knife, a web app for encryption, encoding, compression and data analysis. And it just highlights how ridiculous this is. If you get a stupid code like this and you have to find the flag, you simply open CyberChef, put in the input and try out all the different possible decodings. Maybe it's multiple encodings like first base 64 and then decompress. Luckily CyberChef also has a magic function which figures out it's base 58. I have learned nothing. There's also another class of CTF challenges, sometimes known as boot to root. Basically a whole server or even a network with challenges. So let's look at one of those, blue by TriHackMe. And here's a write up of it by UnicornSec. You start out with Nmap and run all the checks and it tells you it might be vulnerable to MS17010. So now you open Metasploit, look for the matching exploit, configure the exploit, run it and get a shell. Great. If we read further we can find the challenge continues requiring you to find flags scattered around the system. For what? What did you learn now? I understand that for a complete beginner practicing Nmap and using Metasploit can be interesting, at least I thought so when I did OSCP a long time ago, but this is not professional level stuff. You didn't actually learn anything. You learned how to use a tool and that's it. There's no great value in that. You quickly have to move on from that level in order to develop any professional experience. One thing you might notice when you play a lot of CTFs, over time you basically do the same challenges over and over again. If you have experience with many CTFs, you have a typical CTF solutions checklist that you just run through. This can be seen well on the fellow YouTube channel by John Hammond. He has so much CTF experience that he is even developing an automatic CTF challenge solver called Katana, which abuses this fact and implements heuristics and solutions for many typical challenges. Isn't this the best example to see that there is no educational value in CTF? Another problem is the mindset. When you face a CTF challenge, you know there is a solution. It's not like the real world where you don't know if there is something or not. You know there must be something and just have to sit on this challenge for a few hours and you might figure it out. But on real applications you don't know if there is anything and you need experience to guide your efforts so you don't waste time. There are many more differences to the real world. For example, CTFs are short. They run over a weekend and you spend only a few hours on challenges. Sometimes in easy CTFs even less. What do you learn here? In the real world you might work on a target for a week or even a month. The quick rewards from CTFs are not reflected in reality and can give you a completely wrong idea what it means to do security testing. A very false sense of accomplishment. Because it's rewarding to hand in a flag, 
people tend to optimize for that. So people just want to solve it. It doesn't matter how. Ideally, they just find the solution online and copy and paste the tool or even share flags or steal it from somewhere. They see the competition and don't actually care about any possible educational value. CTFs have a completely wrong incentive. In contrast, exams or certificates force people to learn something and test it. Another huge part is the topics covered in CTFs. CTF challenges are often web, crypto, pwn, mostly on Linux, maybe even some obscure architecture. But a big chunk of IT security work is looking at misconfigured Windows environments, shitty passwords, and getting domain admin, exposed network shares, and scanning IP ranges. This is rarely covered in CTFs. The problem is not that CTFs forget about that, they would just be terrible CTF challenges. Unfortunately, this kind of real world work is kind of boring. There are tools and checklists. Maybe you have a challenge that shows this once, but that's it. CTF authors constantly have to come up with different stuff, which means the issues that are very common in reality are never shown in CTFs. And that's a problem inherent to CTF and will always be the case. Let's look beyond the technical aspects of CTFs. Competitions cause a lot of stress and pressure. Working 15 hours straight on a challenge over a weekend, no sleep, no breaks, very unhealthy. It's not something we want to teach people that this is a requirement to work in this field. People should learn about work-life balances, the importance of breaks, and not feel terrible about themselves when they need a break or when they get stuck. If you know there is a solution but can't find it, that can be very bad for your mental health. It can make you feel really stupid and thus it might be very counterproductive. Okay, so far we only looked at basic challenges for beginners. Let's look at the more advanced stuff. A big category in CTFs is pwnable exploitation challenges. Most of these are Linux ELF binaries written in C, sometimes C++. And this has been the state for many years, easily over a decade, maybe two. You can imagine that the first CTF had a basic buffer overflow. The next one had to make it a bit harder, and then the next one had to add more twists. Over the time, CTF authors have uncovered the craziest weirdnesses in libc, oftentimes with the heap implementation, and they only occur in very weird constellations. But you have to go for that in order to create a challenge that is still challenging. If you want to compete on the highest CTF level, you need to catch up on decades of libc research, and then you become a master in libc and nothing else. Who cares about libc? Who cares about weird heap exploitation techniques? You spend years of learning something that has zero to no use in the real world. And eventually you know most tricks and then you are not learning much either. You just need to figure out which tricks were used in this challenge and you become very over specialized. In the real world, memory corruption bugs come rarely alone and often much more complex targets provide a lot more gadgets to use. Exploitation is rarely as weird as in hardcore CTF challenges. There are also these playful, pwnable CTF challenges. For example, some shell coding where you need to create shell code assembly based on SHA-1 hashes. Why? What skills are you supposed to learn here for the real world? Designing CTF challenges is hard and unfortunately most people are bad at it. There's a table in this CTF guidelines document which shows how quickly a challenge can become bad if it's too much work or too esoteric. It's, it's gonna be frustrating. Or it's very easy, thus boring or uninteresting and disappointing. And so why bother playing CTFs if most challenges are bad? Why waste your time? And when you are already a professional researcher, why would you spend 20 hours on a CTF challenge if you could also spend 20 hours researching a real world application, possibly finding a real bug? Why not do bug bounty instead and maybe get a thousand dollar as a reward? CTFs are terrible. Thanks to all the people who responded on Twitter, I tried to include all the major arguments. But if you want to hear the other side, check out the second video why CTFs are awesome.